Greetings, Lazy Dragon here. I want to just talk about something that I think is quite interesting and fascinating, that people seem drawn to the old ways. And I say old ways very generically because there's many names for it. Not everybody likes to use the term pagan or heathen for it. Uh, old ways because it comes back to when people were trying to invent a way or think of a way, put a name to it and a concept to it and a ritual to it, a spirituality to it, a way of connecting with life and existence. Back before technology when people could read books, when they were learning from each other, or just by being out in nature. The reason I like to call it the old ways instead is because, again, you have these definitive terms that have negative connotations with it, but they also have these preconceptions. When you think of old, you think of all oh, mystery or ancient or maybe powerful or wise or maybe it's outdated. There's many ways of associating even the term old ways. But when you think of these practices, these spiritualities that are having a revival movement that a lot of people call these new age movements, why are people so drawn to them? Because it takes you out of the prescribed dogmas that are forced on you by society and by others and you start taking your own introspective look about how you fit with things and you start thinking instead of having decisions made for you you're determining them yourself instead of others dictating how your relationship should be with existence you are learning about that relationship with existence and how you fit inside of it and that's very appealing for people it's empowering people are drawn sometimes to the concept or the thought of magic and mysticism. Some are drawn to ancient and mysterious arts or just something different. A lot of people like the fact, again, that it's a self-taught thing versus living up to the expectations and standards of others, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of being in society. You know, you need to be part of society. You need to live up to certain expectations. You're not going to rob each other. You're not going to uh, attack each other or assault each other. There's certain things that you just don't do in a society. So there are going to be certain expectations, but at the same time, when it comes to your spiritual connection to something that is beyond us or unknown or uncertain, we don't know for a fact how we were created. There's many theories, but let me clue you in on a little secret. Every single one of them is made up. That's right. Every single religion out there. I don't care what religion you follow. I don't care if you're a Druid. I don't care if you're a Hindu. I don't care if you're a Christian or a Taoist or a Jew. It doesn't matter to me. It is all made up. They are man-made concepts. Now, they might be inspired by something else, something different, something beyond. That's fine. But you are still taking something that was thought of by man, passed down by man, and reinvented by man. That might angry, that might frustrate you, that's fine. This is only my opinion, and you can take it for what it is, an opinion. But to me, it's all made up. But that's fine. I acknowledge that and I embrace that because man has the ability to create beautiful things and have deep inspiration from the world around them. But at its core, all faith, all spirituality, all religion is about connecting to the divine source, whether that's being closer to your god, to your goddess, to nature, to creation, or even understanding your inner self, that inner void, that essence that is one with all things. You know, it's very compelling, but finding it yourself, learning and empowering yourself to seek it, ah, that's where a lot of individuals, not everyone, that's where a lot of individuals get drawn into seeking the mysteries in the ancient ways, or the old ways, as I like to say it, even though it's a revival, so it's kind of like a new old way, which is why they call it new age in many cases, some, some folks, it depends on your comfort level. I just find it fascinating to think and to consider that if you take yourself out of all of the expectations of others, which again, they're not bad to have expectations from others, but take a moment to sit in nature and breathe and be part of it. That's when you're going to truly start seeing your connection when you take out your preconceived notions and truly experience them for the first time. Now, some might argue that we could be fooled. We could be tricked. We could not understand, so we make assumptions. And sure, that can happen as well. But it's about the experience more than making these assumptions and jumping on them. Oh, you know, the, the sun is rising because I had this thought at a certain moment, so the sun must rise because I had this thought. And if I don't do that every single day, the sun's not going to rise. A little extreme situation, but if we take that out and ignore that and just experience the rising of the sun, 
feeling the warmth on your skin, the light, hopefully not staring into it because you don't want to damage your eyes, but just experiencing the moment of the sunrise, that moment of experience without judgment, without preconceived notions, without trying to create your own notions, and just living in the moment. This is, uh, some of these concepts are related with the Taoist path. This state, I believe it's pronounced Pu, this uh, state of natural naturalness, existing in the moment. They have this saying called Wu Wei Er Wu Bu Wei, or action through an action. Just allowing things to happen because in their natural state they'll just occur the way they should. And finding that within yourself and just letting it be instead of trying to impose your will upon it. Just fascinating to me. Then, of course, there's the whole concept of magic, and people are like, oh, I want to do magic. Magic should be an everyday thing. It should be in the way that you interact. Your whole spirituality, in my opinion, should be in the way that you interact with the world. How you treat other creatures and beings. Small animals, cats, dogs, birds, wild animals, pets, doesn't matter. How you treat other people who are animals. Yes, people are animals. How you treat and interact with others. All of this should be a reflection of your personal choice and how you live your spiritual path. It should be a manifestation of how you create music and art. This is magic. There's this uh, Taoist saying that I really like, I chop wood, I carry water, this is my magic. There is a simplicity to it, and it seems like a natural thing, and like, oh, that's not magic, that's just people doing stuff. But you are literally talking about wood, which if you just take it with your bare hands, and you are cutting that. Water, trying to do that with your bare hands, but you're carrying that. There is a magic in working with the world in the natural order. There is a magic about being connected with all things, being aware, showing awareness, feeling what's around you, and allowing that to flow through you, manifesting creativity through art, or through singing, or through dance, or whatever the case may be. All of this are self-expressions. All of this are pieces of magic. It doesn't have to be these ancient rituals with candles and altars and robes. It doesn't have to be part of it. You can. I'm not saying you shouldn't. And I know a lot of people do. People do it of many faiths and spiritualities. But it's not needed. And it shouldn't, in my opinion, be something that is a sometimes thing. Some folks are religious and they're super religious one day a week or two days a week or only during holidays when instead you can take your spirituality, your path or your religion, whatever the case may be, maybe all of the above, and apply it to every interaction you have, every waking moment and breath you have. That is how all of, some folks are embracing the newer paths, some of the revival movements, the neo-Druidry, Druidry becoming one with the earth, connecting it, seeing your place inside of it. The, the modern concept or the Western concept, at least, of Taoism and how you can apply concepts to how you go about things. You don't have to be an actual Taoist. You don't have to be the perfect practitioner. You don't have to be all powerful, all wise, but to bring awareness and to bring about manifestation through your daily life, that can be a beautiful thing. Anyway, thank you for watching and listening to my thoughts and ramblings. Remember to thumb up, like, and subscribe, and of course, more videos eventually coming your way.